All right, English students, this is a, a tutorial on syntax. I want you to take some notes. And the first thing I want you to do is to go ahead and uh, read the first half of your notes, which I've finished for you. And I want you to highlight or annotate this text. What is syntax, first of all? Um, what is most important about it? Um, and then maybe clarify some things and then highlight and, and write some things in the margins. What, what's still, what do you still not understand? There's a lot to understand about syntax, so I'm expecting that there's going to be a lot of questions. So go ahead and write those things down on paper for a couple minutes and then start up this video again. Okay, I hope that you uh, read through everything and uh, you should have found this, that syntax is the way words and clauses are arranged to form sentences. That is a, a basic definition for syntax. And uh, syntax is that arrangement. Uh, we also think about the periods, the punctuation. We're thinking about the arrangement of, of, of sentences and paragraphs, all the mechanics and all the things that go together to put words on a printed page. So we're thinking about form, the way it actually looks, you know, print, ink on paper. Um, it's that arrangement that contributes to the, and enhances meaning and effect on paper. It's virtually what we have to make meaning from. And so we're looking at things more about the actual, you know, those actual um, syntactical parts, the parts of the sentences, okay? By the way, whatever's in red in this video is really important. So I'm going to try to emphasize that because there's going to be a lot to syntax. And so um, I want you to first do this before we get into all the nitty gritty of syntax. I want you to get the big picture. To get syntax, you need to take a step back from whatever it is you're reading the piece and take a look at patterns. So that's what we're going to start with is I want you to take a look at patterns. Write this down in your notes before you start to read this first this first piece. I want you to look for, for anomalies. That's things, things that are different from the regular writing. What sticks out for this piece of writing that you have that's a little bit different? And make a note of that and try to explain it to the best of your ability. Another thing that I want you to do as you, as you read the writing for syntax in a moment is I want you to see where things are positioned in sentences, okay? Um, I want you to look for things that are isolated. Maybe they're isolated by a dash or quotation marks or parentheses or italics or something like that. What's isolated? What's, what's by itself? Look for repetition. Look for things that are repeated. We're also gonna talk about parallelism, but this idea that, that things are repeated. Look for things like that. Look for proportion. Um, look for how much of the piece and. Uh, uh, an idea takes up. Okay, so all these things will be things you want to kind of look through as you first glance at things. And here's another big one. Short sentences and long sentences. Okay, um, short sentences are often emphatic, um, whereas longer sentences suggest greater thought. Um, short sentences can speed up the pace or intensity of something, while longer sentences typically slow it down and are reflective. So those are some of the big things that just, what do you, and, and outside of that, what do you notice about the text? I mean, what just stands out to you about the syntax, the way the sentence is arranged, the way the paragraphs are, are, are put together, that whole bit, okay? So make yourself some notes, and after about three minutes, we're going to come back to this video and take some more notes, okay? Okay. Uh, so giving names to the patterns. All right. Hopefully you found some patterns in that text and we talked about it as class. Um, I want you to write this down in your notes. Um, the first thing you should notice is that there are varying sentence lengths. And we're going to give some words to these types of sentences. We have telegraphic sentences, of course, which are five words long. These are really made to emphasize and they're used usually for effect. They can, do, they can also speed up the pace of the writing if you have shorter sentences. They can make uh, the, the tone more direct from the writer. There's lots of things you can do with short sentences. Um, but if it's telegraphic, it's, it's really short. It's actually less than five words, okay? So you'll notice that actually the beginning of the text that you saw, there were some very short sentences used for effect that sped up the pacing. Um, we also have uh, very short sentences that are five words long. And these can also be used to, uh, to create emphasis, but they can also speed up the, the reading. Uh, for the reader because it's easier to read uh, these short sentences. Medium length sentences and then long sentences. Like, like stated, as stated before, long sentences often are more reflective. They add lots of detail. Um, and there's a number of other things that writers are doing when they create these long, sophisticated sentences. Okay. Um, there are also what we call sentence types. 
And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these, but we have simple sentences, complex sentences, compound sentences, and compound complex sentences. You may remember these from junior high. Um, these are, you know, simple sentences, subject and verb, right? Tom ate the rat. It's disgusting, but complex sentence. Because Tom ate the rat, he died. So sad. Compound sentence, um, this is where you have, um, you know, two sentences joined together by a comma or by a semicolon. Tom ate the rat and he died. Or you could put a semicolon in between that. Um, you'd want to get rid of the and, though, when you did that. And then, of course, the compound complex sentence. Okay, so you've got... Um, a sentence like this right here. Um, uh, Tom, I can't see that. Tom ate the rat when he was hungry and he died. Uh, so those are some types of sentences. This won't be terribly important for when you actually talk about these sentences and write about these sentences. But if you know what type of sentence it is, mention that in the writing. When, um, when, uh, when Mark Twain uses this complex sentence or this complex arrangement in the sentence, he da 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 Okay. Um, or the use of simple sentences speeds up the pacing in the narrative um, and yada, yada, yada. That kind of idea. So if you can, talk about the sentence type. If you're not sure, don't talk about it. Uh, sentence detail arrangement. So there's different types of sentences um, and what, uh, that are actually arranged differently. So, uh, for example, a, a periodic sentence is a sentence in which the main thought is not complete until the end. So let's say something like this. After a lengthy flight and many stops, my doggy got to eat. Oh. Uh, so because I put the flight at the beginning, the airplane flight and the stops at the beginning, um, it kind of creates an effect here um, where we're thinking about the flight first, the reader is, and the stops, and then the doggy gets to eat. It's kind of like what's happening on the flight, right? The dog has to wait. Well, we have to wait to the end of the sentence. It, so it creates that effect. It also creates an effect for the reader um, that the reader may get their attention on the flight and the stops and maybe kind of de-emphasizing the doggy, okay, because it's at the beginning of the sentence. A loose sentence um, is where you have the essential meaning is complete before the end. Um, my doggy got to eat after a lengthy flight and many slot stops. So in this sentence right here, we get where the action mostly is happening, that the doggy got to eat, and after a lengthy five minutes stops, this is what we'd be more accustomed to. In a balanced or parallel sentence, um, it would look something like this. And this is where we try to, to take phrases and, and balance them to create a likeness or structure and make things even or equal. Um, my doggy was walking, running, and jumping. Or how about this one? To err is human, to forgive for divine. These aphorisms or sayings often uh, use this parallelism, but you're going to see parallelism a lot. And it usually makes things more even keel and also adds a lot of symmetry to the writing. Syntactic patterns are also used in writing. Um, we've talked about juxtaposition before. This is where you have normally unassociated ideas or words or phrases placed next to each other. They're not text necessarily placed right next to each other like an oxymoron, um, like cold heat or something like that, but you get normally unassociated ideas within a sentence, okay? So juxtaposing ideas. Parallelism. I put two asterisks next to that. That's really important. It shows equal ideas for emphasis, and it also creates rhythm. So in that previous example I just gave you, this is really that parallelism right over here. And what it does is it kind of it creates a it creates a rhythm. It can also it, it can emphasize something, and it also can show equal ideas. Repetition. So of course we have perhaps the same word being repeated throughout sentences in a paragraph or in a sentence. So these words, sounds, and ideas are used more than once. Again, this can create rhythm for the reader um, to help bring the reader along in an almost poetic way, or it can create emphasis. A rhetorical question is a question that expects no answer. And we're going to see this a lot when we get to look at, um, well, rhetorical analysis. When we get to our we look at speeches, when we look at more um, argument-driven um, essays. But uh, for right now, you may see some of these in the text. And these can really affect the tone of the text as well. We also have sentence moods. We have different types of sentences in this way. We have declarative sentences making a statement, my dog needs to eat. Um, very short, but it's, very, it's declarative. Or we have imperative sentence, where this is where it gives a command, okay? Feed my doggie, 